Okay, welcome to lesson two for Pipeline Academy CAD Essentials. Uh, I'm here with Raf. Hey everyone, I'm the student. And, and Raf standing in for Aaron today. Uh, Aaron is a CAD expert and Raf is a uh, beginner to intermediate uh, user. He's going to help me point out some things that I may forget along the way so that uh, you guys have uh, don't have a lot of questions after we teach what we're going over. So, uh, in the last lesson we designed a coaster and we got familiar with the CAD interface. Uh, that coaster was meant to be a really simple thing to get started on, uh, but uh, in this lesson we'll uh, take it to the next level a little bit. Uh, so as with most lessons, we're going to have kind of a prompt, and uh, in the last one it was uh, our boss needing us to uh, help him not have white rings on his desk after every drink, and in this one uh, we've got feedback. Uh, he liked our coaster, did a great job, uh, but it's also uh, real boring looking. So. Now that we've designed our coaster and we've got some feedback, we want to go back into SolidWorks and uh, and make it maybe a little bit uh, nicer to hold and uh, look a little bit nicer on the desk. And in that process, we'll learn a little bit more about SolidWorks and a little bit more about uh, the thought process behind designing stuff as well. Yeah, that was pretty funny. The yawn. Nice. <laughs> Alrighty, so in the description you should be able to find files to download on your computer and you can put them on your desktop maybe and, and open that up. But you'll see a version of the coaster we made in that folder as well as an assembly that I made that has the coaster on the desk. So you probably have a copy of something similar to this on your uh, computer but you can also open this to make sure that we're starting from the same point. So I'm going to start this lesson by opening up the old coaster in SolidWorks. Uh, I just uh, double clicked on it from the file browser and it opened up in SolidWorks. And as you can see, it's a very simple part. It just has the, uh, the extrusion that we went over. Uh, in fact, I can go, I can open up the assembly Let's do this. Okay. So I can also open up the assembly just to have that open already. And you can see the coaster on the desk there that we can move around. Now, uh, we want to talk about what we want to do to make this coaster look a little bit better uh, and, and maybe feel a little bit better in the hand when you're moving it around the desk or uh, anything like that. So one thing I was thinking is uh, maybe we can make the top not so sharp because it looks like a very basic shape. So maybe we can make the top of it look a little bit better and uh, and, and maybe we can actually put like a, a recess so that the cup actually fits in like a a little indent in the top of the coaster. Um, so the uh, the easiest thing that we'll start with is uh, putting a little indent in the top because you may have seen some coasters that uh, might have like a little ledge that with water pools up inside it doesn't just spill off the top. And uh, to do that we're going to use uh, another extrude feature um, and that's going to be the uh, the cut extrude, which you can find on the features tab. And up here is called extruded cut. Uh, you can start your cut in a variety of ways. You can create a sketch and then do the extrude like we did in the first feature. Or you can actually click on the extruded feature and then it asks you where are you going to create the sketch that you have not made yet? And uh, because I'm going to put a cut on the top, I'll go ahead and click on the top like this. 
and you'll note that if you look in the top right, you've got an indication that we're in a sketch mode right now, as well as it moved us to the sketch tab to let us know that we're ready to get started. Uh, but you can see the top surface is kind of at an angle and we can draw this way, but it would be very, it could be difficult to visualize what we're drawing on an angled surface like this. So like Aaron and I discussed on the last lesson, you want to you usually want to look straight at the surface or as we called it normal to the surface. So uh, I could do that a variety of ways. Uh, my favorite way is the shortcut to do that, which is uh, control eight. And to do that, uh, it will look straight at whatever you have selected. And because we're in a sketch mode, it looks straight at the sketch mode. Uh, but there are a variety of other ways. I think uh, there's this thing and in this uh, heads up display that we reviewed on the last lesson. Um, if you're if you're just looking at this part, you click on the view orientation button and then you've got a couple things that you can select from. So I might click on the top of this cube to look at the top of the cube and that kind of moves the uh, the disk into the position that we want it. This might be a hard thing to visualize, so you might spend a little bit of time just kind of clicking on it and uh, trying out the different things you see, uh, but you get a preview on the top right of the screen, which I won't be able to point at because when I move my cursor off it disappears. But you can see up there, it's going to show me what I will eventually see when I click on it. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay. So now we're in a sketch mode and we're looking straight at the surface and I want to create a little cutout for my cup to sit in. So I'll start by drawing a circle because that's sort of our motif right now. And I'll drag that out to something that looks about good. And uh, I can give it a dimension. Um, so we're in a circle mode right now. You can see over here on the uh, property manager that we can continue to draw circles. Um, I don't need to exit the circle feature here. I could just move straight to the next thing. So if I click on the dimensioning tool, it'll automatically close the circle tool. So I can click on the circle and give it a, a dimension here, or I can click on the coaster circle as well and tell it what the thickness of this is, you know, how far away our cut is from the edge of the coaster. So when you're dimensioning things, you can actually click on things in the model that aren't necessarily in your sketch, because in this sketch, we didn't draw that bigger circle. I'm just clicking on the part itself. So here I might tell it to stay about 0.2 inches around the edge all the way around. And then I can close the sketch. And because we started by clicking on the cut tool, right after I close the sketch, SolidWorks will automatically open up Cut Extrude. So uh, right now we're looking straight at the surface and it's kind of difficult to understand how deep we're cutting. So I'll go ahead and rotate again by holding down the middle mouse button. And this yellow area is a preview of our cut. And I could rotate that around to kind of see how much material we have left. Uh, I don't need this cut to be too deep because it's more for, for looks than anything right now. So I like the default 0.1 that SolidWorks gave me. So I'll go ahead and hit the green check mark to close out on that. And now you can see we have a cut. So that's a good start. I think it looks a little bit better. It's not just a, a, a boring disc, uh, but I think we could do better. Um, right now, these edges are pretty sharp. You know, maybe um, maybe you go to pick it up too quick and it actually cuts you or something if we make it out of metal. So I want to soften a lot of these edges. Uh, I think I'll probably start by putting a chamfer on the outside corner. Uh, chamfer is an interesting 
feature that's it's used quite a lot but it's always hidden underneath this feature called fillet um, so if i click the down arrow i'll see chamfer um, so that's going to be something that takes a minute to get used to most of the stuff we use is always visible but there are some handy tools that are hidden underneath these down arrows so i'll click the down arrow on the features tab under fillet and select chamfer. And I've already selected this corner or this this edge all the way around the disk. So SolidWorks is already trying to apply a chamfer to that. Uh, but if I forgot to click on that, let's say, let's say nothing is selected and I go into the chamfer tool. Uh, all we have to do is just make sure the items to chamfer box is highlighted and then we click on the thing we want to chamfer. Uh, by default, it's trying to put a huge chamfer on here. That's bigger than the entire ledge. Remember, we told it the ledge is 0.2 inches. So maybe I'll do something half of that. I'll do 0.1 inches. If I hit enter, you should see a preview on the screen here. And you can still rotate that around to get a better idea of what it looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I could decide to change the angle. So right now the chamfer is... You can see here, this yellow line is a 45 degree angle from the top surface. And if I wanted a different look, I could actually increase that angle like this. And, and you can see this uh, surface changing the way it looks. Uh, I don't really like the way that looks, so I'm going to go back and change that to 45. And we could always change it later, but right now we'll leave that and hit the green check mark to accept it. And now our chamfers are, uh, our coaster is looking a little bit more slick. You know, it doesn't look as blocky and uh, I think it looks a little bit better. Um, but besides this, we do still have a lot of sharp corners and those generally don't look good unless that's something you're specifically going for. So I am going to add what we call a fillet to each of these edges. And a fillet is just a, a rounded edge. So uh, if I, sorry, if I go up to the features tab and select fillet, I can get started adding fillets to any of the edges that I want. So I'll start here on this inside edge, make sure that it was selected up here, and then I can type in the dimension I want. Again, this is a pretty big dimension to start with, so I'm going to change it. Uh, let's say I want it to be 0 0.05 inches. And now we've got a preview of this rounded corner. So you could imagine that it's removing material to kind of, they're, they're cutting away material to make it look round. Uh, there are a few different types of fillets that we can do, and we'll talk about those later. But we just start here on the left side and select our edge and change our dimension. You can see all sorts of uh, settings along the way that we'll be able to change in the future, but by far the thing you do most is just a regular old fillet, just like this. I like the way this one works, so I'm going to accept that. Besides looking good, that probably also helps you put your cup in. You know, the cup might hit the edge of this, and then the, the fillet kind of guides it down into the, the recess there. But I still see a lot of sharp edges that I don't think I like the look of for this project. So I want to create a new fillet um, because we want to cover the rest of these. So I'll click the fillet feature again. And actually, I'll select more than one of these. I'll just do all three of these here. So you can see I can actually select multiple edges and it will apply the same radius to all of them. And um, I could change that radius here. Let's say I like a smaller radius for these. And you can see that they all updated automatically. And then I can hit OK. Now I could have had all of these edges in the same feature, but I wanted to make this one a little bit bigger than these others. So that's why I did them in two separate features.
Okay. So one thing at this point that I wanted to talk about is uh, a little bit about design intent. Uh, when we're creating each of the features in this coaster, I'm showing them to you in a specific order because they it helps you set up your feature tree in the most intuitive way uh, so that maybe when you come and edit this part in a year from now, it won't be hard for you to understand how you put it together. Or maybe a coworker opens it and they've never seen it before. If you build your part the right way, which we'll teach you, uh, it will be easier for your coworker to work on your files and for future you to work on your files. So what that usually means at its highest level is that your chamfers and your fillets are always the last thing you do. I could have put a cut in the middle of the tray at the end after I applied the fillets to these outside three corners, but I decided not to do that because you start with the part as it needs to be, and then you add all these little kind of nice little rounds and things at the end. Uh, there, the most basic reason why you do that is for, you know, for clarity. But another reason why you might do that is because when you have really complex parts, uh, if you've got a bunch of fillets and other basically useless features high up on your feature tree, and then more cuts and other features after your fillets, you create a scenario where uh, you can actually break uh, your feature tree. As you might imagine, this cut relies on this boss, and this chamfer relies on the boss as well. And as you continue to build through the tree, things start relying on features that are previously built. And if you do a bad job organizing your feature tree and something changes, maybe you decide I don't want this fillet anymore, or I want to add an extra cut over here. If you don't build your design tree appropriately, the whole thing might fall apart. And it's very easy to just start the right way and move forward with the design just with a little bit of a thought towards the future and it doesn't complicate the modeling process, but it really simplifies your life in the future. And uh, that is a large part of what we call design intent. Uh, the other big part of it is uh, when you build these features, you build them in a way that you think they would change in the future, you know, like um, this is a very simple part, so there are probably not a lot of ways you could do this wrong, but we created a circle to make the first coaster, and we made that bigger than a, uh, a cup would be. And that's a really basic idea of like design intent. I didn't just make a circle. I thought about uh, how big is a cup, and I made it bigger than that. And as you continue to get more advanced in SolidWorks, there are some tricks that you can do where you set up your file uh, thinking, if this dimension changes in the future, I want to make sure that everything that relies on it stays where it needs to be or moves to where it needs to move to based on where things change. So we'll get more into that in the future, but I think the important thing to keep an eye on right now is how we're building these in a specific order. We're doing extrudes and cuts before we do chamfers and fillets. Hopefully that's uh, somewhat understandable. We'll elaborate more on that in the future. I'll take your silence as awe of my great explanation. No, I was muted, but uh, yeah, sounds good. Everything's making sense to me. 
Okay, so I so let's say that you're trying to have great design intent, uh, but you have gone so far in a model, like you've already put fillets and chamfers in, but you want to add a feature. Well, SolidWorks makes it really easy uh, so that you don't have to just delete everything you did and then go put like maybe another boss in somewhere or maybe another cut. So uh, there's a thing we call the rollback bar. And if you hover over this bar just below every feature in your tree, you see like a little hand pinching it. And if you click on it, you can actually drag it up to just before whatever feature you want. So right now I'm, I want to create a new cut that we haven't talked about yet. So I'm going to drag it all the way above the fillets and chamfers because I want to have good design intent here. And I've used the rollback bar to move before those features happened in time. And you can see in the graphics display that all of those features are no longer shown. Now, if I wanted to create a new cut, like let's say I want to cut some material off the bottom of this coaster, I can revolve it around and do a cut example again. So if I click on this bottom surface, I can create a sketch, select the circle tool, dimension the circle. In this case, I don't care how big the circle is, I just want to for reasons, put another circle in here. Uh, I've done this in a slightly different way than the last time we did a cut, because I just want to show you that, like we said in the last lesson, there are so many different ways to do things. Uh, in this case, I started a sketch first, but I can actually now go to the extruded cut feature on the features tab and do a cut. Works the same way. Uh, I want to create a very small cut, so I'll highlight this and put uh, oops, 0 0.025 inches in. I'll accept that. And now there's a cut on the bottom of my coaster. And if I grab the rollback bar and roll forward, you can see that the fillets that I had and the chamfer still work just fine. And the feature that I created even though I created them after these other features, I was able to insert them before them. So now the cut, the cut's still on the bottom, but these fillets still work just fine. So that's uh, using the rollback bar is a very common thing because a lot of times as you're designing something, you're not sure what it will look like at the end. You just kind of have a good idea of what it starts out as and then you might want to roll back and add a cut or add an extrude or something like that. Um, so at this point, I might actually want to apply a fillet to this new cut so I can edit the existing fillet that I have. So I'll right click on that and select the edit feature icon. And you can see the other three lines that were highlighted. I'll select another one and then accept it. So now we've added this line to the fillet feature even though that line didn't exist when we started the fillet feature. All right. Great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit, I'm going to save this by hitting control S. Um, Oops, I made this in an older version of SOLIDWORKS, but that's fine. I'll save that. Um, so now I won't lose any of the work that I did. But I want to talk a little bit about what happens when things change in the tree. Uh, I talked a little bit before about how we have it arranged in a certain order so that things uh, work a little bit better for you in the future and you'll understand more about that as we go along. But what happens if I need to remove a chamfer and there are features below it that rely on it? 
before we do that, I want to talk about how you can see on my screen right now there are arrows uh, next to the feature that I've selected. And what they're showing is this is the thing I rely on, and this is the thing that relies on me. And this was not available in very recent versions of SolidWorks. Uh, and I think last year's version of SolidWorks, you would have had to enable it. So depending on the version you're working with, you may or may not have this. But this is a very handy tool because this says, if I delete this chamfer tool, this fillet's going to break because that fillet specifically relies on the chamfer. That's what those arrows mean. So I want to do worst case right now and show you what happens when I delete that. And you could delete a feature from the tree by right clicking on it and saying delete, or you can just left click on it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. And by default, what SolidWorks wants to do is it will look at what happens if I delete a chamfer. And it will say, oh, it'll break the, the, the fillet below. So SolidWorks just wants to delete that other fillet. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to let it delete everything. Uh, for example, if I delete this boss, you can see these arrows point to everything. Everything relies on the boss. So if I delete that, uh, it's going to delete the chamfer, and then it's probably going to give me more errors and stuff like that. But what you can do when you delete a feature, it asks you, do you want to delete the dependent items? And you can say no. Oops, sorry. Um, I guess no means it won't do that. What it's asking you is, it, what does it want to delete that? And what a lot of people don't know is all you have to do is hit the advanced button, and then it shows a second window where you're allowed to like select which child features you want to delete. And child features just means the features that uh, are dependent on the thing you're deleting. So... Uh, most people, instead of using this advanced feature, what they'll do is they'll cancel here, they'll go to the fillet, and then they will unselect anything that it relies on so that when they delete it, they don't get anything in that box. But that's too much work for me, especially on a really complicated part. You could spend an hour scrubbing through the tree trying to figure out which fillet to remove and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll, I'll undo that and I'll show you what I do. If you click on the chamfer and delete it, you just hit the advanced button and you can see that this is not checked. So if I hit yes, that fillet fails because we because it can't find the edges that the chamfer created. So all we have to do is go back into the fillet and say, that's fine, we don't care about those edges anymore. So you can see that these are uh, it shows that it's missing the chamfer's edges. If I hit OK, SolidWorks will just delete them automatically. And then now I don't have the error anymore. So uh, that's a little advanced, but I think that's pretty important because it could save you a lot of work right off the bat. Uh, if you have to go back and kind of reverse engineer your own feature tree and find those fillets and unselect them, that's going to take you a long time. So I just go in there, delete whatever feature you need, use the advanced delete so that it just, you know, it doesn't delete anything dependent on it. You could just go back through and clear it. So if I had 50 fillets that were all dependent on it, they'd all light up like a Christmas tree over here. And I just go in, open them up and hit okay. And then everything fixes itself. I'm going to undo all that work because I really like what we've done so far. I just wanted to show you uh, what happens when you delete a thing in your feature tree, which you will do a ton in the future. Um, and then I, yeah, I have a note here I just wanted to point out. As you see, I, I just presented to you two ways to solve that problem. One I said was my favorite, and one is other people's favorite, you know, doing it the more manual way. Uh, a note that I've hit on a lot so far, but I just really want to point out again, is that uh, there are so many ways to do things in the software. You may see something that I do, and I'm telling you based on my experience and the people I've worked with, it's the best way to do it. 
you may find very compelling reasons to do stuff in a different way, depending on the project you're working on or the preferences of yourself. Um, and that's fine, but try to start where we're starting from and then uh, figure out when you want to kind of break those rules if you need to. All right. So the next thing I want to do is share a new feature that would have actually worked great for this, uh, this part from the start. Well, actually, I'll save this. Um, and that's the revolve feature. Uh, anything that is round in nature could be created with a feature that we call a revolve. And if we knew that this part was going to be round to start with, we might have started with that feature instead of an extrude. So if you remember, a extrusion is just some sort of shape that we're pulling out in one direction to make, you know, to make 3D. A revolve is slightly different, and it's a 2D shape that we rotate instead of pull. So I'm going to create a new part right now, and we're going to make the same coaster using a different feature to show you how we could have done this in a different way. Okay, we had some technical difficulties, and Roth had to leave, but I'll pick up from where we left off, and uh, hopefully I won't skip anything. We last talked about creating a rotate by starting a new part. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk a little bit of strategy. If we're going to create a rotate, basically what we're going to do is imagine this part cut in half. We'll sketch the profile of this part and then we'll rotate it around. Uh, and now the profile is just kind of like the outer shape of the part. Uh, so just looking at this, uh, imagine if I had cut this from left to right, what this would look like. Uh, if you have, um, normally you don't have the benefit of already modeling the part, but I can show you what that will look like because we've already done that here. Uh, but I'm just showing you this to visualize it. It's not necessarily something that's going to be part of your workflow because, again, in a normal situation when you're creating a part, you haven't already created the part. Uh, up here in the HUD, uh, we have a option called Section View, which is super helpful. It's something that you're going to use a ton uh, for a lot of other situations. You know, not really for this because of where we're approaching it from. But if I click this, it will uh, cut the part in half on one of our main major planes here. Here it's selected the front plane by default, but I could choose to click any of these others and it's just gonna grab any of the other available planes. For us, since this part is kind of the same regardless of the plane that you cut it from, except for the top one, I suppose, uh, it doesn't really matter what we're picking here. Uh, if I click accept, you'll see that the part has been sort of temporarily cut in half. Uh, SolidWorks is just, just not showing me anything on this side of the plane, and it's showing me everything on the other side of that uh, imaginary right plane there. It also colored the part of it that's cut as like a visual cue of uh, this is not a feature that is designed into your part. It's just like, you know, this is where the uh, section preview is. Uh, so if I rotate my part, I could kind of see uh, what the shape is when you cut it in half, and that's sort of what we're gonna sketch in a new part. Uh, so in reality, again, you're not gonna start by looking at this and creating it, but uh, this is just an idea for you to keep in mind when we get started. So I could turn the section view off just by clicking on the option in the HUD again. There we go. I guess I'm getting instant messages. Okay, anyway, uh, so let's get that new part started. If I select the new icon up here, I'll select part and hit okay. And uh, well, in the other part, if I, uh, I guess I 
could go to window and then select one of the other options. Uh, this option up here is showing me what parts are open currently. So I was just looking at that coaster and I created a new part that didn't close my old part. It's still open in the background. So if I go to window and select this, it'll just switch over to it. I rarely use that option because I use a keyboard shortcut. I hold control and hit tab and it kind of shows me what's available up here and I can click between them or if I just hit control tab, it'll go right to the last one. Anyways, most, I think a lot of people use this window option and then they click on the other one. You could do whatever works for you. Anyway, when we were doing the section view, it was doing it from the right plane and that's how we could see our profile. So we'll go ahead and do a sketch on our new part from the right plane as well. Uh, this choice is largely like arbitrary, but again, generally when you're modeling your parts, you want to imagine how they will rest when set down or a lot of times uh, how it will be oriented in its use. Um, but it is largely a preference thing. So uh, I'm going to start on the right plane here. So I'll go to the sketch tab and create a sketch. Okay. So now we need to start drawing our profile. Uh, in this sketch view, you'll see that there's the uh, kind of coordinate axis here, uh, this red line up and this red line to the right just indicates that's where our origin is going to start. And then I want to start sketching what the coaster looks like. So uh, I could imagine that this origin is sort of the where the tabletop is and then the coaster's bottom would go across this way and then uh, up so that's sort of the side of the coaster and then we'll go back like this and then there's some sort of depth for the coaster to sit in and then I'll just go back to the origin here so now you I'll hit escape there so that I'm no longer drawing any lines um, and now you can sort of see half of that cross section that we were looking at earlier and then I'll show you what it's going to do in a moment but let's give it some dimensions actually you know what no let I'll show you what it looks like so far so while I'm in the sketch mode I could click on features and then do the revolved base uh, boss or base so if I click on that it kind of moves the sketch to an angle so we can see what's about to happen and then I select an axis of revolution. Because I drew this sketch, I know where I want to rotate this sketch about. And I'll select this line here, and then you can see it kind of went out of the viewport here. So I'll zoom out. And uh, SolidWorks has guessed that I want to take that profile and go 360 degrees. So you can see that here. And, I, and that's correct. So I'll just go ahead and hit OK. So now you can see a rough shape of that coaster, uh, which looks pretty good. You know, we have the, the basics here. We've got the, the shape of the coaster and then this um, cutout here. This is pretty helpful uh, to look at, but let's give some dimensions to make sure that this is going to work for us. So I've right clicked on the sketch and hit edit sketch. And now our sketch is here. If you remember again, we want to look normal to the sketch, so I like the shortcut Control-8. Uh, that helps uh, you look directly at any sketch that you have selected. And let's give it some dimensions. Um, if I use the Smart Dimensioning tool and go from this line over, I have to think about how big is my coaster and give this half of that dimension because let's say uh, the coaster is three inches in full diameter this sketch is only half of it because you know it gets rotated around to the other side this dimension would be you know half of three inches which is 1.5 inches and I'll hit OK and things get all wonky and the reason why this happens is when I started sketching it gave everything some 
length. It just wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't locked down. So when I give a uh, dimension of 1.5 here, it's going to move that line over to 1.5 and nothing else gets moved. Uh, I could fix that easily by grabbing this line and coming over. Uh, but this is kind of an unintuitive number up here. I don't like uh, giving this, this is the radius basically of the coaster. I'd rather talk about the diameter. And if you wanted to, you could add a center line, which is kind of, you know, the center where it'll revolve around. I just clicked here on the origin and I'll go up and you could see the yellow uh, relations that are being added when I click a vertical relation, which is the one that's important here. Uh, now when I give a dimension like this, I could start from the center line and go to the outer diameter. Still see, it still looks like the same dimension, but if I go to the other side of the center line, it imagines what the full dimension would look like. So if I click on this, it now says three inches, which is a much more intuitive number. You know, you don't have to do any math in your head now. And uh, it doesn't add anything to the left side because we don't need it. You know, we're gonna revolve this profile around 360 degrees, but this little visual cue here is just an indication of what that full dimension is. This is super helpful and I highly recommend you do it as often as possible because uh, it just makes it a lot easier to you know, uh, to think through what your dimensions are going to be. Okay, let's define the rest of this. Uh, another great reason to use these revolves is because it actually could help dimensions be a little bit more intuitive. So before we made the full coaster and then we cut a hole in it. Uh, so we had to already know what size the hole was going to be before we made the coaster. You know, let's say we had a, a three inch cup. We had to think, let's design a part that would be bigger than three inches. So when we cut a hole in it, the cup could fit into the hole. I'm sorry if that's not clear, but hopefully it'll become clear in a second. Um, what I'm going to do now actually is I'm going to delete this uh, measurement and I am going to do a similar measurement from the center line to the outside of the hole, like this. Now, uh, this is the hole that's cut for the cup to sit inside, so I'll go ahead and I'll put like 2.75. Let's say that we wanted this hole to be 2.75 inches so the cup could fit inside. Okay? Now I can create a dimension beside... Uh, a dimension from that wall to the outside wall to give sort of a minimum thickness of our part. But I will point out that right now I've only clicked on the outside wall, but because I've done it right after the previous dimension, SolidWorks thinks I'm continuing to do this center line dimension. I can still just ignore that though. I, I just click that one wall, click the other wall, and then SolidWorks will forget the guess that it made. So now that I've got the dimension between these walls, I can give it some amount of thickness. Let's say we give it a quarter inch here. Uh, a great thing about that is if somebody tells me they want a bigger cup, the wall will move with it and stay the same thickness. Let's say somebody says, you know, I've got a huge novelty mug and I want it to be uh, a five inch cut into it, you can see that the coaster still has the same wall thickness the whole way. If I had dimensioned them uh, independently from the midpoint to the outside like this, and then somebody tells me to update this dimension to accommodate their mug, then the sketch fails basically, right? It looks I mean, it didn't fail. You can see there's still a sketch, but if I tried to make this part, uh, I can't understand what's happening here. So this is a great reason to have this revolve because I can just click here and it will always be that dimension. Uh, 
Similarly, we will define the rest of the sketch. From here to here is like the minimum thickness of the coaster. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, I don't know, 0.2 inches. This lip seems a little high, so I will click on the bottom of that cutout and the top here and do uh, maybe 0.1, that looks fine to me. And let's accept this and see what it looks like. So automatically SolidWorks has updated the view and it's looking pretty good. Now I will point out to you uh, that I'm sure several people are sitting there wondering why didn't I sketch everything in that sketch that you would have seen in this other part, right? In this part we've got chamfers and fillets and other sort of fillets and this cutout on the bottom. And generally you want to make your sketches as simple as possible. Uh, the reason why that's the case is if you make a really complicated sketch, it could be difficult to make changes in the future. And in SolidWorks, you, I mean, in design principles in general, you want to design parts that are pretty flexible. You know, you don't want to spend 40 hours on one part and then somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you change this one feature? And then it just destroys everything. And then you have to start from scratch. Uh, so that's why you try to create as simple sketches as possible until you're given a reason you know, to do a complicated sketch. So in this case, I did not have to sketch in that chamfer because it's still just super easy to create a chamfer. I go up to the feature here, I click on the outside, and I give it a dimension. I don't know what we gave it before. I'll give it 0.1. That was a lot easier than sketching in a line and then giving it a few different dimensions to make sure that it stays in place, right? Uh, then we can go ahead and uh, then we can move forward with adding the fillets. I don't remember what those were, so I'll switch over. Uh, if I double click on this, it will show me the dimension that was created with a 0.05 fillet. I mean, largely, I could just put whatever dimensions I want on these things. Oops. It really doesn't matter what the others were. I'll click on this surface and add some fillets. You can see I'm making the use of the pop-up feature where if I click on something, SolidWorks has some contextual clues on what features you might be wanting to use and it'll pop up this this menu. So if you move closer to it, it gets darker and then you can use it versus if I clicked and then moved away from it, it goes away. So I'll add one more fillet here. There we go. So we still have a coaster here and it looks pretty similar to the other one, but we were able to create this revolve in sort of a more intuitive manner uh, where we could define what the outside diameter of the disc was uh, by first deciding what the inside was, which is a pretty handy thing. Uh, Now, uh, other features like this cut on the bottom of the first disc could be included in the first sketch, the first revolve, if you wanted it to. If there was some particular reason, uh, like maybe the minimum thickness of the disc, uh, you can add that into the feature or you can just create a new cut. There's no rule saying that because I used a revolve to create this, that I wouldn't be able to then uh, create a cut on the bottom, like a regular, you know, extruded cut. Uh, but just for fun, we'll go back in here and we're going to edit this sketch and add that other cut and, uh, and, and discuss why we might want to do that. So if I use the line tool and just start anywhere I want, let's see, it's about here. I'll click there. There we go. I'm just hitting escape to exit the sketch tool. I could give this some dimensions. Let's say I select here and here. Actually, I, um, yeah, let's do that. I'll put a dimension here. 
again, this feature was sort of just created to show um, to show how to do things. Uh, in real life, you might create a feature like this to minimize the amount of material used to create the molded part or something if this were to be molded, or uh, maybe to make it lighter. You know, there's not a lot of functional reasons, I guess, to put this hole in the bottom other than just to show you some features. Um, in fact, I will start by clicking on this line and go out to here. Okay, so you can see my sketch is fully red. Uh, you'll note that these uh, reference sketch lines uh, might have a blue point at the end of it. But as long as that line isn't moving around, SolidWorks will actually still consider this a fully defined sketch. And that's because it's just kind of, you know, nobody cares where the point of this line ends. It's just kind of hanging out there and it's not driving any features at this point. So we don't need to fully define that. Uh, now, one thing that we can do is cut away and I'll show you how to do that in a moment the lines from the first sketch before I added these two new lines, or we can leave it here. This is just a matter of preference. Uh, if I exit this, SolidWorks will get upset at me because there are two uh, internal geometries here. If you think about SolidWorks is looking at this sketch and trying to figure out what we want to rotate around this dotted line here. And, uh, and it's seeing a rectangle here and then another shape here. And it's not sure which one to do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just say exit because I know exactly what the problem is. So I'll, I'll hit continue and I get some errors, but I just dismiss them because I know what they are. Uh, and you'll see that the revolve has failed. You can tell because it's red here, it's red there, it's red there, and I have nothing in my viewport. Um, Right now, I will uh, right click here and edit the feature. And we have an option here called selected contours. Because there are more than one contours, I can select here and pick the one that I want. I'll go ahead and rotate this so you can see what's happening. You see how I've selected this uh, larger portion and it's not using the area that's in the rectangle I just drew. That's exactly what I want. But let's say that's not the case for now. I could actually also add the uh, little rectangular region by selecting it. And you can now see that there are two regions being rotated around the axis of revolution. Uh, alternately, I can reselect the first one, and then now I'm just rotating this rectangle, which doesn't seem very useful. I can select it again. Um, you can control your selections here by right-clicking on them and hitting delete, or left-clicking on them and then using your delete key. And another way for you to select contours to rotate is by selecting a line that is drawn. So in this case, uh, it selects the entire outside region of this line that was drawn. Um, but I don't want that. It's not going to have the area down there. So I'll clear these selections and I'll just click here. Oh, it looks like I lost my axis of revolution because I was clicking around too much. Uh, I'll highlight the axis of revolution and I'll select this dotted line there and hit OK. So now if we look down here, we've got that cut out. Uh, again, we didn't need to do that in the Revolve. In fact, I probably would not have uh, because uh, it's not really related to any of the main functional features of the coaster. Um, you know, I might have just, uh, well, let's go through that right now. If I didn't want that feature and I select these lines and hit delete, I have a real simple sketch here it's just the pure function of the part. If I accept this, SolidWorks knows that there's only one sketched region, so it revolves that simply. And then I might go to the bottom here, select it, and then sketch a new circle. Hit Control-8 to look at it. Sketch a circle here. I can dimension it to the outside of the part so that 
it's parametrically linked. If that part gets bigger, this circle will get bigger. And uh, go to the Features tab and hit an Extruded Cut. And then uh, I can just type in a dimension here. Let's just give it a 0 0.05 and hit OK. Now in reality, I would do uh, probably something slightly different here, but this is good enough for now. I'll roll this feature all the way to the front and I'll do something I should have done a long time ago and that's save the part. I'll call this one coaster L2. L2 just means less than two. Um, I'll call it live. We'll do it live. Okay. So that's how to do a revolve feature instead of an extrude. Again, like I said, you're going to make this judgment call based on what you think the part will ultimately look like. Uh, you're probably not going to do a revolve on something that might end up being a square because after doing this round feature, you'd have to go in and then cut things and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so sometimes you might embark on a path in one direction and then realize that you are ending up with a, a part that may have been revolved and it'll just be up to you whether or not you want to go back and uh, start it from there but um, usually it's pretty clear on what you're doing so that's the end of lesson two uh, one thing that i thought would be useful is if at this point you uh, open up the file that was provided and add a new cut to the feature. Uh, let's say you wanted this to look a little bit nicer and uh, you wanted to kind of have what looked like an engraving on this top surface. So go ahead, open up this file, look at the features and, uh, and see if you can add a cut on the top. You know, you could just do another circle if you want to or if you want to get crazy, uh, put some shape in there, uh, just make sure that you always fully define your sketch. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.